Welcome back to another edition of the Down and Back Cornhole Podcast. This week, another, as I said, another bucket list guest checked off. Rosie Streaker, ACL Pro, will be joining me. Get to talk with her. I kind of got to meet her a bit back in 2018. I know I did get to meet her husband, Davis, back in 2018. I kind of played on a couple boards next to her, but we talk about that during the interview. Uh, but a couple things to get to this week. Um, ACL Virtual, back on International Virtual, will be a uh, – the registration will be December 20th. Then they will take uh, players from Canada and the U.S. will be matched up with – international players <coughs> from Europe and elsewhere. And then they'll be playing a, uh, a virtual uh, doubles match, um, which coincides right with the question that I brought up this week, uh, if you've seen it on Facebook, asking are, are virtual tournaments still a thing? And obviously they are uh, with the ACL International. I think that is, for me, with the virtual stuff, I think that's the best thing for it is to be able to bring players like from Europe to people with North America to South America to to the Asian players. It's that I think that for me that's where it is. I'm thinking virtual stuff. There's 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 the the, the virtual practice stuff that people put online and say I got this, I got that. I think I think that's that can kind of be okay. But for me, just having virtual tournaments with just local stuff. I think for me that's run its course because during COVID that's when it kind of all blew up and uh, and everybody was doing it and it was a way for people to kind of keep kind of some sort of competition. But as, as like I've said with some other people that you kind of, for me, I need to have that other person beside me throwing some bags, getting that board a little dirty. And, and really the other thing is, is that, you're throwing against an open board. So you can have those people that are like fantastic, you know, fantastically high deck run numbers, but then you get them in a real game and they struggle. You put up a blocker, you know, doing, doing the virtual deck run stuff. You don't have those blockers unless you set up your own practice stuff, doing deck runs with that. That's what, that's what it is for me. I can, I don't want to say, I don't want to call it false sense of security with how good your game is, but, you know, it certainly is a way to, for you to kind of judge how, if you're getting better at putting bags in a hole or, or whatever. But I just, I feel that for a local kind of thing, I think we're back going in, in, the, in the other, you know, local events and, and in-person events. I think that's the way to go for me. Virtual, I think, should just stay at the international level. Um, doing that stuff, being able to have people kind of compete and, and get to know, and that's kind of the old kind of getting to know people, getting people inside your, you know, growing that circle of cornhole. So it's, it's, it's to get to know things. So for me, leave the international stuff to the, the international virtual stuff, virtual locally, go to a bar and play. That's, that's my, that's my thoughts on it. But the ACL international virtual. Open to anyone, pro, non-pro, intermediate, wherever you are. Sign up December 20th uh, online on the ACL app, and uh, and you might get picked to be uh, to be in it. So that's that. Other stuff that's coming up. Uh, first ACL Central Conference Tournament coming up. It's at January 13, 14, and then there's the uh, Southern Ontario Cornhole Series final on January 15th. That'll be a separate event. Um, the conference event, I think juniors, seniors, and women's still have some space available. I know the open and the advanced doubles and singles both sold out as everything else in, in Ontario. I'm not sure about the intermediate, the, the competitive and intermediate. Not quite sure, but uh, you can check on the registration for that there if you want to get in and play. Uh, another fantastic weekend in Niagara. So it's it's going to be the same Niagara Conference Center, smaller smaller part of the room. So we're not going to have as there's there well they're not going to have as big of a space to uh, to play in as they did before for the Open. 
smaller smaller section of the venue so that's why there is a little more limited and a lot of people are upset about that but it's uh all due to uh to spacing that they can get at the venue the other thing acl has announced all of their opens south of the border in the u.s have all been announced and up here north of the border we're still waiting that's okay we don't we don't mind you can know, let that stuff but we'll get it this there will be some stuff here i've been assured of that there will be an open in canada again to uh to be able to have that great great experience again and hopefully we can get some more of the the pros up from south of the border to uh to participate and even some uh, some even just non-pros coming up to play i know a lot of people I uh, got to have some fun with that. Sean Farrell, uh, Bobby Pearson Sr. got to do it. We got to see Nick Petuski. So some of those up-and-coming players coming up here, I think, will be uh, a great thing for for some of our Canadian players to uh, to 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 get to know, get to try and play against, to see kind of where they match up. Which I think really, you know, is is probably one of the, one of the better things because we kind of get used to up here in, in Canada playing. Kind of, we're all kind of centrally located. Get to know some of those other people. So just kind of, you know, I don't, I don't want to say you're getting out of breath, but you start playing the same players over and over again. It's uh, it starts to uh, it starts to wear on you. So we'll get that there. So before we get into my talk of Rosie Streaker, we got to talk about the sponsors. And bag sponsor is just I don't know. Maybe maybe at the conference event you may have to start watching out because. Throwing a little better now. The uh, I just talked with him the other night, Jamie Callum. I got to play against him up at the shop all the time. As you know, wins used to be you no know, once every two, three, four months. We're getting to almost once or twice a week now. So watch out for me throwing these here. Fantastic local bags. I've been throwing the Outlaws, the Warriors, and the the Hustler X. I'm loving them. It, it's it, they've improved my game so much. So make sure you get onto the local bag company website and uh, Santa 25. I think that's still going. You can get your 25% off local bags, and they do they do ship to Canada. I got to talk with Chris about that the other night, and uh, they do ship to Canada. So don't be afraid to get the bags coming up here, and with the 25% discount off, that helps out with that shipping cost. So get them and then as i talked jamie cowan check out jccornhole.com get some boards some jc cornhole boards great boards they stand up to anything they are just fantastic to play on and uh talk to jamie he'll customize them any way you want them so there's that and then if you're out west edmonton sherwood park to be exact as always check out sierra property inspections with darren and uh, remember, whenever you book a, uh, a, uh, a time to have him come and do the home inspection, a portion of that money goes to a, uh, a child cancer hospice in the Edmonton area. So just, you know what, you get, you get your home checked out and you do something great to help out a family in need. So without further ado, here is my talk with ACL Pro, Rosie Streaker. And here, as promised, we have, as I said before, bucket another bucket list guest, Rosie Streakers with me here. Rosie, how you doing? Good. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Well, and as we kind of talked off here, this has been a couple years in the making that we've been kind of going back and forth that just schedules and kids and work stuff just haven't matched up for us. So it's we finally got the time. Yeah, I'm so glad we finally got the time to sit down and chat. Yes, because you've got you've got a couple things going on that we're going to kind of talk about here. But uh, but first of all, and, and as we start, again talked off here, and if everyone else is watching here, their usual who's used to me saying this here, kind of first kind of met you. Well, I was standing next to you a couple times, but met met your husband Davis back 2018 in Cherokee. As everyone's probably sick of me talking about 2018 in Cherokee, but that was the first time I got to kind of see you know down there and then to meet you kind of meet you like i said and davis but uh it's a long time ago that was a long time ago that was a really fun tournament though 2018 at cherokee well yeah and it, it's it, that was my first kind of 
introduction, I guess, to the to the to the bigger Cornell scene. We we were the we were the six guys that came down from Canada. Thought we were all all bad up here. And then we got down there, and it was like, oh, well, we're we're really bad. <laughs> A super interesting fact about us with that 2018 Cherokee. Um, Davis and I took a pregnancy test in the bathroom right outside the venue, and that's where we found out we were pregnant with Mason. <laughs> <laughs> There's another memorable thing for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, in going back, how about you know how you you get your start in Cornell? Because I know Florida, everyone down there is just playing like crazy. But how did you kind of get your start with playing? Um, I feel like I started the same way a lot of people do. Um. I was at a Miami Dolphins football tailgate and kind of just threw a little bit. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. And then a local like bar and restaurant was started playing cornhole on Sundays. Um, and you could win uh, gift certificates. So I was like, okay, I'll try. And it was a blind draw. So then we started kind of playing more consistently. Cause I was like, okay, I'm okay at this game. But way back then I took the ball, the ball, the bag, and I would roll it up as though it was a ball. So I could do my same slow pitch movement so come a long way it's pretty incredible oh and, and it has just even from you know you look back to that tournament back in, in 2018 in turkey and how far and how much it's progressed to now is just insane for me oh I, I absolutely never did i imagine playing there that then it would become as big as it is and televised and sponsors and bad companies as many as there are i mean it's it's grown and continues to grow and like blow my mind each year. Well, exactly, and you know, if people up here that will we'll see you and recognize you because you you've you've made a lot of TV appearances here lately here, and luckily we got to see a lot of you. Um, I guess not luckily for you in those games, but the CBS <laughs> broadcasts with the uh, the last over the last year that it was just that's another thing, another kind of side tournament I, I guess you can say that's come up with the ACL yeah the pro shootouts are such like a fun side um tournament that they have um it's really fun that they've changed the format a little with being round limited and I definitely could really get far in those tournaments but could not make it um all two seasons ago and then finally last season I got the second one and I didn't have to worry about it the rest of the season but they're a lot of fun and it's it's fun too because it's um, a smaller group a lot of times traveling to those, although I think this year it'll end up being a much bigger group. Um, but it's fun, the kind of different pace and the different strategy that you have to think of in the round limited games. Well, I think you can't throw them off the back. That was my big <laughs> problem I was having. Well, I think that's where you see with a lot of players that are used to having these long, drawn out games that they can't do that. It's you have to, you have to really be aggressive right off the start. And I am known to be a player that has a lot of rounds in each of my games, and really just I feel like okay, I'll just outslide them and take my time, and eventually they're going to miss. But you can't. It's not the same strategy in the shootout series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's you know it, it's another uh, another great way to get you know you out there to to showing with, with cornhole with another I don't want to say another network but just it opens up because I know for us in Canada we we don't get all the ESPN broadcasts we have to wait for for a Facebook or a YouTube to see them but those CBS we were able to see them on our affiliates that we have up here so it was just cornhole for us every week which was nice. That is nice. What's incredible too about the shootout series is that the men and the women have equal exposure. Because if um, otherwise you're going to have to win up to the singles or to the pro doubles division, where in this aspect you're able to have your separate women's division and then the men's division. So you're able to, with a smaller pool of players, um, have more TV time, which is pretty incredible too. Well, I think that is probably the most important thing in that because, you know, I still feel for me up here, because I even see it with, with some of our female players up here, is that there's there's not that the same kind of, well, you know, I guess, like exposure, like you said, but it's just, it's it's that game because the, the women's game is just, there's so many great players that don't get a chance to be shown out there or or let everyone see them. Yeah. And the women's players, those PPRs are so high, it's just isn't transferring over to single. So I'm really, really hoping that we see a lot more female players up in the top of brackets. 
this season in the pro singles and pro doubles. Hoping Sam and I make a, a good, good run there. Well, I'm oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I'll do it. Um, it's just incredible, though, that the American Cornwall League is really providing the equal payouts and the same TV exposure to women because that's not the same in a lot of sports. Like, that's a big thing a lot of times in uh, the news down here where women's sports salaries are so different and how they're treated so differently. So it's incredible that here in Cornwall, it, with the American Cornwall League, it's so, so different. Well, exactly. Yeah. And then, and you talk about Sam, you've had a, you've had a great run as her partner and, and she's, she's going to show me, I got to, to actually talk personally with her up here when she was walking out the, the open in Niagara, but she's just another fantastic player. And, and you've had so many great doubles runs and even some great singles matches against her as well. We have, I love her and she's my least favorite player to play in singles. Just because if she doesn't do well, like I, my heart feels bad for her as we're playing, but I know I have to stay in playing your game mode. And I know she feels the same way for me, but we, we always have really great matches. And we have a lot of fun as doubles players. We're both competitive and we still compete against each other and look at each other's PPRs and see who's throwing better in doubles. Uh, with Sam, we've won the 2018 World Championship for women's doubles and 2020. Um, I didn't compete in 2019 because I just had the twins. Yeah. Um, and then last year was the first year that I had competed in a women's doubles and didn't win. But we had a good run. Um, I can't even remember who our losses were to. But I mean, we had a good run and did well. So hopefully this year we'll come back. Well, I know there was at least one game that she played. I played that she didn't have a partner that was as good as you because I had to apologize for throwing bad again with her with it, it's a it's a recurring habit I have, but it's just it's it's like I said it, it's the the women's game the doubles is just it's so tough because you're not sure you know with with some of the, we'll say the men's side you kind of know who's going to be there usually. With the women's side is there's there's you can almost put everyone in a hat and just kind of you pick a, a name mode and that's who could be winning because it's so tough. I agree. The competition in the ladies' field, and, and a lot of the ladies have very similar play styles. So it really just depends who's going to be hot that weekend is who's going to win. Um, I mean, Cheyenne's phenomenal, and she's always very hot. So you have to be, like, extra burning hot if you want to beat Cheyenne because she is. I mean, she's an incredible, incredible thrower. But there's so many. So it's the more that the ladies just get really hot for that weekend, I mean – it really could be anyone's game. Yeah. Now you just you just had a conference event, Southeast Conference event, which I think is it, it's got to be. I think that's why there's so many great players from the Southeast Conference is because there's so many great players there in the Southeast Conference that you have to compete against in just local leagues or or regionals. Just forgettable conference, but there's so many great players down there. I agree. I'm a big believer in if you want to get better, play up, play better competition, and you'll grow more as a player. And even locally with our South Florida Cornhole League, we're seeing a lot of the players that were newer and have kind of moved up to the advanced level or playing more in the blind draws. I mean, they're growing and, and becoming really tough competition, which is really incredible. Within our conference, though, I mean – it's like the best of the best people that you're playing. Uh, Fisher Hamilton was there. Alex Rawls, Alan Rawls. I mean, Cheyenne. I, they're all. Everyone's just Kyle Malone who won the whole thing. I mean, they're just really incredible, incredible players. It's fun too because a lot of us have played together for years and years, and like got to. I've seen a lot of them grow up because I'm older than most of them. So it's fun to kind of see how they've grown as people, and then also as Cornell players. So you were you had a little bit of a successful weekend there. Well, you, your Friday night was probably your your best night there because you kind of you kind of took it all. But uh, with the, with the women's and then the uh, the blind draw. Yeah, Friday night was incredible. Even in our sex field, I mean, we had Sarah Cassidy, Cheyenne, Lori Duell, Sam Finley, of course, uh, Miranda Coy, and then a new player from us, uh, Tony. <laughs> I mean, I threw above an, or just below an 11 for the whole tournament and was able to go undefeated and win the whole thing. 
Cheyenne came back through the loser's bracket after I gave her her first loss. And I was able to, I said, I just have to get it in one game. I can't give her the confidence of a first game. And then I was nervous I would lose it. But luckily I stuck in. I mean, she threw amazing. She was a high 10. And then our local player, Tony, who I played, I gave her her first loss and she threw so good. She plays just outside all those pro ladies. Um, I threw a high 10 and she threw a low 10, which this was her one of her I think maybe her first conference. So, I mean, it's just incredible how much everyone's growing and how everyone's throwing. And I think that's one of the great things I like seeing up here is almost every tournament you see someone new that's kind of popped up on the scene that you're like, oh, where did they come from? And then you kind of talk to them and like, <clears throat> I know there, there's a couple up here. Um, uh, names are just kind of escaping me here now, but they wintered down in Florida. And so they, they, they play down there and, it's it's just you know there's so many people that I've talked to up here that say oh we're down in Florida we got to play against Rosie Streaker we got to play against Sam Finley they're all they come back saying we all lost but we got we got to play against them and you know just kind of showing up to to where their events nice and that's what's really nice down here you can play outside year round besides the rain and during the summer it rains almost every day but you can stop your play for a little bit and then start again. So I think that's a little bit of an advantage for us is that we get to play year round. So the other thing you have going on that, that's that, that's coming up here in March, and we talked a bit about this off, off here as well too, is in, in Topsail, North Carolina, March 17th to 19th, you're kind of combining with uh, with Michelle Thompson, who's been on the show here before, with uh, with a women's retreat, which I think is is a fantastic thing, just being able to, to get into, to kind of do like a, the mindset and the uh, and the throwing kind of live in a group setting. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Um, it was Michelle's idea, and she brought it up and asked me about it, and I said I would love to be a part of it. Um, just being around um, females that are of the same mindness where they want to grow as cornhole players, they have the same passion for the sport that you do, is just an incredible experience. So I feel like a weekend at an amazing house on the beach with a chef preparing meals and listening to Michelle kind of talk about mindset and how to grow and overcome different things as a player. I mean, honestly, it's just, I would love to do it personally. So, I mean, it would be really great. And just kind of seeing different players and seeing where they want to be in their goals as players and kind of figuring out and helping them to grow and get there. Um, brings back like me as an elementary school teacher. So I was very excited because it's sort of blending my two passions together because I worked a lot with struggling readers and I would say, okay, you're at this point, but this is where you need to be. Like, let's figure out what's going on with you that you're not getting there. So I feel like cornhole and kind of helping a little bit in a clinic scenario um, brings out some of that same skills that I have and I'm very, very passionate about. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm excited and I've written a million things on what I want it to be and it's such a quick weekend so it'll, it'll be a lot of fun and a lot of jam-packed like learning but also great experience. Like so I think I guess we can say for all the men here that they're watching that you know we're getting close to Christmas and you probably haven't got anything for your wife for Christmas send her on a retreat give her a court hall retreat. Yeah and right now it's just the $200 down deposit and already half of the rooms are gone I've, and it, there's there were a lot of rooms in the house so should be really fun. And all exactly. the ladies that are going, it seems like they're a really gr great group of ladies that are just excited. Well, I think that's that's the other thing too, is when I see the, the, the women's game that's totally different than the men's, is that when you see the men's after a game or whatever, they're not really talking. But whenever you, you, you look at the women's division, y'all are just huddled up. Like it's just it's just a big family thing, which I think is, is, is so much better than, you know, just getting upset with your opponent. You're, you're, you're always there cheering each other on, which I think is fantastic. I agree. I, I do love the camaraderie. And there's also like definite competition, like everyone's very competitive players. But when, as soon as you're outside the game, there's such camaraderie. And even within the game, it's good game. Um, Connie Altice is one of the best examples of that. Um, She'll win, I'll win. And if I win, she gives me a big hug and like, you threw great, do great your next games. Like it, it's just very nice, positive feelings you're getting from the players, which is really, really great. Cause I'm sure not every sport would be like that. 
And I know the men's division. Some of the men you play there are definitely don't give you a hug after you beat them. <laughs> yeah, I know, and that, but that's you know, you can even say that they that they they're not like that. But it's cornhole as a sport, though, is fully like that, and that's the one thing that that really kind of drew me, especially seeing down in North Carolina there when I was there in, in Cherokee that. No matter really what happens, when the night is all said and done, everyone's still getting together, going out for that drink, or just going, you know, talking. And it's just the atmosphere with a pro. And I've, people got to see it up here at the Open when we had the pros come up. Is that the ACL pros are some of the best people because you can go and talk to them. Maybe not best to do it during a game, but yeah. just after a game to go up and ask for tips or just kind of you know what they think. Pros are always right there to talk to them. I agree. I think that is one of the amazing things about the sport of cornhole is that everyone is very, very approachable and very, very welcoming and and wants to talk to everyone. I mean, because we all are. I think that's what makes the cornhole family is that everyone does want to be around each other and enjoy each other. Exactly. Yeah. So with that, I kind of shift gears here a little bit. I put a question. Lately, I've been putting out a question of the week each week. So I'll, I'll kind of put it to you because I kind of give my opinion on it before. It's just virtual cornhole. Yay or nay on you? Because I know most of the pros aren't really up with the virtual cornhole. And for me, I'm just, I'm, it's great practice, but I don't really see it as a big measure playing against a person with just seeing your deck on because you got the open board and you don't really get a chance to really, I like a messy board myself. So I don't get any real points for throwing up a block except for just the one. But what, what's your thoughts on it? Um, I like virtual cornhole a lot. I don't play it as often as I would like to, I'm sure. Um, if I practice in the backyard, though, I practice a lot by myself, and it's just slide right in. Um, but the last virtual event I played in was the international one where they had the pros with international players. And, oh, my goodness. I can't think of his name right now. I played with... Uh, Canadian fellow. Yeah, I'm trying to remember now myself. Yeah, oh, this is so terrible because we message. I, I mean, honestly, that's one of my favorite tournaments I've played in, and we've messaged back and forth a million times. Um, but I mean, it was really fun and just it was a great, great experience, and it was fun to kind of see everyone and root on the different players. So I liked that aspect a lot. I was actually, I'm hoping that they do another big um, international event like that because that was very fun. Well, I guess another thing that's that's now just kind of popped into my head talking about virtual cornhole and that's starting up during during our, our COVID shutdown stuff was you got to have another opportunity doing something during the, the shutdown that the ACL put out where you got to have a backyard game uh, against against Davis. I mean, but it was just I think, I think that was just a great experience because we were able to see you kind of you guys in your element, right? It's just, you know, might not have been the, the, the best outcome or whatever, but it's still, you know. Oh, he kicked my butt. He calls it the backyard beatdown. And when I ask him now, I'm like, hey, do you want to come outside and practice with my son is four and he's getting into practicing in the backyard with me? And I'm like, oh, do you want to come out and practice with us? He's like, oh, did you want another backyard beatdown? <laughs> so I still hear about that at least once a week. He, I mean, he's hanging on to that backyard beatdown. But it was a, a lot of fun and being able to do that. We had just moved into our house, too. The girls were pretty little. Well, then, speaking of your son, I got, I've got another question I've asked you, which is I've always wanted to ask you this here. With the kids, is it easier to deal with the kids or would easier to deal with Rob and Davis in the, in the heyday of Boardman Cornwall? Because I know they got <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, those are really funny. Um, if it was just Mason. I only had Mason. I would definitely say he was easier. But now that we have a four-year-old and two twin two-year-olds, I mean, I got to go with the kids are harder. But those two are very funny, oh. um, and they find each other very funny. They're yeah. definitely going to be around. Well, and that was the thing. It was whenever I, I, I could sit off here, whenever I walked by the, the boardman booth, there was always a laugh because there was something that was going on there. That was just there. The, the carnival, I want to say, it was almost like a carnival type atmosphere with them kind of being like the carnival barkers just trying to, to get you to come and buy stuff. It was just, it was funny. They are. And honestly, they're like that selling things or not selling things. That's just sort of them together. 
they really feed off of each other, which is fun and very funny. So now the other thing we have to come to is sponsors, because I know you have a sponsor that I have to try because it's how I got my start in Cornhole, but uh, the sponsors that you have. Oh, I have BG Cornhole, who I love. Rich and Graham are just the best. Um, they're very, very encouraging. They're very involved. They definitely follow our games and comment on them and um, are always there and messaging us. So that's really great. And they have such, such incredible bags. Um, my two favorites, I mean, everyone knows I love the dark slides. And I like them a lot because we play outside in Florida's those of you who have not been to Florida, it is very, very hot and very, very humid, which makes um, if at in the evening when you generally play your blind draws, it's very sticky. Um, and it's like a wet sticky. So it's you need a bag that's fast where it can kind of push through that. And the dark slide's perfect for that. So I love those on stickier boards. And then we play all, a lot of our ACL tournaments inside. And I'm just getting into, I threw this past weekend, the sorcerers for my first like big tournament and i really like those i mean they were able to stop and move and just do what they needed to do on those slip boards um my other sponsor that i love uh sugarland shine they're right here on the shirt um it's a moonshine company davis and i davis actually ran a tournament for stacy prior to us knowing who stacy moore was at all um, when he had the ATL and it was like kind of a tailgating league and different games and he held the Florida championship and it was like a series of a couple different tournaments and it was sponsored by, I believe it was Shipyard Beer. And we met a gentleman that was a distributor through them and then he kind of just followed us and now um, he is with Sugarland Shine and he continued to follow like my path through Cornhole. So he reached out and they're amazing sponsors. They give us lots of samples that we bring to Cornhole and share with lots of friends. So they're, they're a very fun sponsor to have along. They're, they're also a very encouraging and I always shoot them, hey, I'm gonna be on TV. So they always post it and then cheer and see how I'm doing, which is really nice. That's that's one I haven't had yet. So I have to, uh, I have to be able to find you in a tournament or else just find a place where I can get that because Again, as everyone will probably be able to, it should become a drinking game for, for the show here with my talk about Cherokee or my start in Cornhole being in, in Charlotte, North Carolina at NASCAR and Moonshine at the same night. Yeah. They uh, yeah. sponsor, uh, I believe it's Dale Earnhardt as well with NASCAR. Yeah. My favorites, there's a butter pecan sipping cream that I really, really like. Davis likes the sweet tea. Or the electric lemonade they're both good ones well i will i will have to try all Later of them i see you having you try some no problem trying all of those there Another <laughs> sponsor, i can't believe i forgot our local um south florida cornhole um they're i mean they're amazing it's our just our group of players um davis started running south florida cornhole in 2014. so we've been we run I think we're at three weekly events each week. We're about to start a fourth. And then we run a lot of fundraisers, charity events, um, team building for companies, a lot of private events. So it's a lot of fun. It's fun doing those because we get to, with the private events and the charity events, Davis does a lot of the running the tournament and I walk around and kind of help people score, or help people fix their throws so they can make it to the board. So I enjoy that a lot. Some of them we get to bring our kids to, so they're there kind of participating, running around wild and throwing bags. And so it's fun. It's nice because it's like a whole little family experience. Well, Cornwall's always been a family, but you you mentioned one thing when you're talking with BG with your sponsor about the 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 the, the humidity with the with the, the, the board, how the boards get sticky. That's the one thing that new players up here really struggle with sometimes, where they're thinking that how can this, you know, it should just be the same all the time, but Boards play different to where they are in the room, right? I'm, I'm guessing Florida's. I think we've seen. I was I'm not sure if it was two years ago. There was the one, uh, the one kickoff where it was like you really noticed that we're away. People watching a lot of people's live feeds away from the from the front door. We're mm -hmm. different than watching the front door. So, how do you as a player then try to get your your mindset with uh, with those changing the boards? 
For me, within a tournament, I try to stick to the same bag, but I have a bag normally that I know is going to move pretty good on a stickier board and then stop some. Mo the um, national tournaments that we play in, there's not normally that huge a discrepancy. Florida is definitely different. Some of our indoor venues, it's definitely way stickier by the door just because the humidity is so high. Um, but just trying to pick up and know what bag that's going to stick more on one side and then the other side's just going to move a little bit more and not letting it get like totally into my head, like knowing, okay, maybe I'm just going to throw a little bit harder here, or maybe I'm going to throw like a little bit more arc in my bag and kind of throw it a little bit lighter to get it there to kind of make up the difference rather than, oh, it was a sticky board. There was nothing I could do. Kind of making small changes that it's not going to really affect my game. And I think that's where some people go wrong where they try to make these big wild changes in their game just to try and balance. It's like you've almost got to just kind of live with it and just kind of stick with what, what got you there. Absolutely. Especially if you're doing good, that you want to stick with it. If you need to do a whole change, then <laughs> might not run your day anyways. And everybody has those days too. Yeah, that, that's usually my game. But it's, you know, it's, it, I'm getting better. That's a, a, a doing doing cornhole boot camp really has helped me out a lot so it's that's all michelle oh, me at all. she's phenomenal well it's, it's, she's a great person so i want to we're coming up to the half hour here i want to thank you i think you have to come back on again here in a couple months we'll kind of check and see how you're doing because i have a bunch more stuff that i uh that i want to talk with you about here that's just kind of been floating in the head here so uh Thanks for coming on and doing this here, and uh, and hopefully it won't be two years. Like I said, we'll do it a couple months to come yeah, back. On. I would love to be back. This was very fun. And maybe even have Davis on to uh, to give his point because right now he's kind of been he's now just in the background watching the kids when you uh, when you play. So give him a, a chance to be in the front as well too. That I would love that. That'd be wonderful. Okay, so uh, again, thanks for uh, thanks for doing this, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Maybe even see you on the boards uh, on a live feed somewhere soon as well. Hopefully, yes, definitely. Thank you very much. And again, I want to thank Rosie for coming on and doing the show. Like you said, it's been a couple years in the making. And and how about that? We talk. We got. I got to talk to her early, early in the week, and we uh, we were talking about her conference win. And then she started talking about how the you know she would love for another international virtual tournament because you know she got to meet other people internationally and then the very next day uh acl international announces that the acl international virtual tournament again so they must have been kind of closed circuit coming in looking at our our talk and then they put it up so remember registration flat is december the 20th uh, probably doing a small show here next week uh, because it will be running into Christmas. Everyone is just busy. We've got a ton of regionals coming up here on the weekend. Uh, we'll talk about that next show and then some other ones that are coming up. And then in the new year, we've got we've got a lot of new leagues up here in Canada. We're going to be talking with some of them that have uh, that have become ACL. So we're going to be talking about with those those players or those directors for those leagues, and then also some some other Canadian player spotlight of some people that maybe you should be kind of keeping an eye on to uh, to possibly, I think some of them should be pros now, but, you know, maybe next year in the future, we might be adding some more if we add some more or not, or just uh, get some new uh, new people into playing that can, uh, can grow that sport as a youth. So check out that show. And remember, subscribe to the show. We're like four subscribers away from being able to give away a set of local warriors. And if you haven't followed the Facebook page, Give that Facebook page a follow. Give it a like and a follow, and then uh, and then tell all your friends about it because we're just spreading the word of cornhole, especially in Canada, some of south the border because you guys have already done all that, and uh, and then hopefully soon we'll be playing on a video game. If you haven't seen some of the ACL posts about that, playing the ACL video game. But that's all for me this week. Check out the show here next week, and uh, and if you're listening on audio. Thanks for the downloads. We'll uh, we'll keep that going. It, it just the down audio downloads just keep going more and more each week. Remember, if you're watching just on audio download, stop over to YouTube. Just give us subscribe on YouTube to help out the show that way, and uh, it will be much appreciated. So, until next week, just have fun playing bags. <laughs>